the dear planet for the water so my soul longs after thee you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee you alone are my strength Spirit You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship Thee Hello friends, welcome to each one of you. Till yesterday, we were re reflecting on the biblical book of Judges. And today we are proceeding further. And today we are going to concentrate our study on the books of Samuel. And first of all, a little bit of introduction into the books of Samuel. The history narrated in the books of Samuel are really historical. Of course, exaggerated elements may be there but usually considered to be very true to the fact. And there are negative comments and also negative narratives about King Saul, about King David. And therefore we can say, this may have been written at a time close to their life. Especially with regard to David, we can say such a historical note should not have been written during his lifetime. And also very late after his life. Hence, we are to assume that the negative notes on the life of David, the history of the sins of David, may have been written immediately after his death at the time of King Solomon, most probably. Because after 850 BC, nobody would have dared to write about David in such a way. Because David was considered to be a holy man even by that time. And hence we can say the history narrated in the books of Samuel can be taken to be true. And this history of course is interpreted and elaborated with a theological mind. And as we said in the early classes on introduction, the history here in the book of Samuel or in the books of Samuel are a theologically interpreted history. At the same time, the historical truths are sufficiently included and elaborated. And as we enter into the study of the text of Samuel, let us remember a couple of points for the preliminary reflection. We already mentioned that the books of Samuel belong to the corpus called the early prophets according to the Jewish canon. 
that is Jewish scripture. Therefore, Samuel belonged to the books of early prophets. And then, in the Hebrew and Greek, there is a difference in the name of the book. In Hebrew original, it was only one book, whereas in Greek, it was translated and then because of the length of the material, the book, one book was divided into two and thus we have first Samuel and second Samuel. Another point that we should remember is, that, is this, the names given in Septuagint or in the Greek Bible is different from the name given in the Hebrew Bible. And this we can say, the in Hebrew Bible, it is called Samuel, but in Greek Bible, it is called Kings or Book of Kingdoms. And therefore, we have a change in the names practically. It would mean in the Masoretic text, that is the Hebrew official text, it is called 1st Samuel, oh, sorry, there is only the book of Samuel. But in the Greek Bible, we have the first book of Kings and second book of Kings. And in a parallel way, we can say with regard to the book of Kings in Hebrew, in Septuagint or the Greek Bible, there are two books on Kings and they are called Third Kings and Fourth Kings. In one of the classes earlier, we had mentioned about it, how the difference is to be understood. And as we mentioned at that time, it is important to remember this point. Otherwise, when we read some books written in the early 20th century or maybe before 1950, the usual way the biblical text were cited would include first kings, second kings, third kings and fourth kings. And that would mean if ever we find a citation saying first kings 1020, then if you look into our first kings 1020, we may not find it then naturally do not think the citation is wrong but refer to 1st Samuel 10.20. The same way, if we find a reference to 4th Kings 5.10, chapter 5 verse 10 and do not think it is a wrong citation but go to the 2nd Kings 5.10 and there you will find the text. Therefore, this difference in the name is to be kept in mind because otherwise it may cause sometimes confusion or doubts regarding the authenticity of the text. Okay, and now with regard to the books of Samuel, we can also say that there are different cycles or traditions integrated into the book. And there is another difficulty that comes here or that we encounter here is this. Usually, the name of the hero of the story is given to the book. Just to look at Joshua, for example, or the other books and 
the book is named after the hero. But there is a difference here in Samuel. Actually, in the first book of Samuel, King Saul is the hero. And in the second book of Samuel, David is the hero. But the book is not named after either Saul or David. Why? We do not know. Maybe that God had designed it so. And Samuel's name is given to the book. And that is more meaningful in a way because Samuel is one who has always been close to God and he has never gone away from the Lord. Whereas both Saul and David had committed serious sins and were punished. And therefore, according to mind of the Lord, we are not sure. Name Samuel may have been more apt for the book. Only an inference. That's all. And another thing is, usually the book ends with the story of the death of a person. And then only we begin another story. But here we find, for example, in 2 Samuel, the death of David is not yet included. The story of the death of David is narrated in the first book of Kings in chapter 1 and 2, his farewell discourse and the narrative about his death. And therefore, we can say there is some sort of discrepancy here. Contrary to the usual practice, we do not find the narrative about the death of Samuel at the end of the book of Samuel, neither in the first book nor in the second book. We say Samuel's farewell discourse was given in chapter 8 of 1st Samuel and his death is mentioned in chapter 28 or 29. Okay, there we find the, it is partially mentioned Samuel died and joined with his ancestors and Therefore, no much description about the death of Samuel is given there. Okay, in chapter 28, verse 3, we read about the death of Samuel. Now, Samuel had died and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. Therefore, we see just a quartial mentioning about the death of Samuel. Practically, much details should have been given about him because he was such a prominent figure in the history of the kingdom of Israel. But we do not find such a place given to him here. And therefore, again some sort of discrepancy in the narrative. And with regard to David, we see the death of David is given only in the book of Kings and not at the end of 2 Samuel. Therefore, some exceptions are here. That is what we can say about it. Okay. Therefore, this is the preliminary introduction. With regard to the historical, geographical, political background of the books of Samuel, we already mentioned about it as we were dealing with the detailed introduction into the history of the nation Israel. We had already mentioned that there are three periods, the first being the period of tribal confederation, 
the second the period of rise of monarchy and growth of the kingdom and the third it is the decline of monarchy and destruction of the kingdom and now when we speak of samuel saul and david we can say it is the subject matter of the second period that is the period of the rise of monarchy and growth of the kingdom and we have already seen what all things are contained here <coughs> first of all with regard to samuel he was one of the most accepted and acknowledged saintly figures of the old testament and a judge a prophet and accepted by the people all considered him as a good prophet god considered him a trustworthy prophet towards end of chapter 3 of first samuel we read it and people accepted him as one without any falsehood or any deceit he has not deceited or he has not um, dealt with anyone crookedly or in a deceitful way he has received no bribes always upright just and also leading a holy life and therefore samuel was accepted by all as god's representative for them and thus at the time of samuel we find the kingship is granted when the people clamored for a king samuel of course had felt much pain because he knew that people are rejecting him in spite of doing whatever he could for them and this rejection of the people felt him really sad or made him really sad but god comes to console him and then we see god ask him to anoint for them a king and thus the first king Saul is anointed but he was not eager to abide by God's commandments and God's directions were disobeyed by him with the result that he was rejected from kingship but we see he was not ready to abject the throne or um, reject the throne to abdicate and we will see he is holding on to the gift he was given in spite of the fact that he was rejected by yahweh and there is a long period of conflict between saul on one side and david on the other side but david even though he was anointed king by samuel according to the direction of yahweh did not want to capture the throne by force but he waited for the appointed time lord has given and that was a long time for him and when the time came we see david becomes the king first of judah alone and then of the other tribes too thus he became the king of the unified israel then we had also seen about his reforms in the political level and in the religious realm and the davidic dynasty covenant which was so important at that time for all this we have seen to some extent and this is practically the historical political background of the time 
and with regard to the geographical expansion of the country we already had mentioned about it we know at the time of the confederation of the tribes they were often attacked by the neighboring mighty enemies but once samuel took sorry once um, saul became the king he was able to organize the army and israel had a standing army with a good strength <coughs> and with the support of the army and under the grace of the lord who was considered to be the military chief of this chief of israel we can say the because yahweh is the lord of host army lord of the army and therefore we see during his time israel was able to grow thus the kingship arose with king saul the first king of israel and he was anointed by samuel but when he was rejected now david comes to the scene and at the time of david we see there is a growth or expansion for the empire david conquered all the surrounding mighty nations thus expanding the kingdom of israel into the size of a small empire we can say and with regard to the political scenario we also mentioned that the great powers at the time empire of egypt and empire in the middle east at the time it was assyrians they were not very strong and very influential in palestinian area and therefore nobody came to intervene when david conquered the mighty nations one by one and this history we find narrated in chapter 8 of second samuel okay therefore it is clear that david grew in might power and glory during the years of his reign and he was acknowledged to be one of the best warriors of the time there was nobody to challenge him in israel or maybe in the known world of the time because bible acknowledges him to be such a great hero and we see it is in this way that he made the kingdom grow and he got exerted influence we see in the sea trade in mediterranean because most of the ships had to touch one of the ports of israel and that was a source of great income for him again even with regard to the kingdoms to the east of israel he extending up to river euphrates and tigris he had an effective control therefore david's kingdom was at its highest glory we can say politically and geographically this is what we are to acknowledge as we begin our study on the text of samuel okay this uh, with this introductory notes now we go to the text itself and before beginning the reflection on the text we are to remember some special features which are so relevant about the book of samuel and these special features are to be always kept in our mind too and we should also look at the various by background details of the king of the book of samuel first of all with regard to the author of the book somebody might have written it down at the time of samuel 
or at least by the time of Solomon, the original draft might have been there at that time. Because as I mentioned early, to narrate the negative storylines will not be easy at the time of the events or at the time of the kings. And after some time, maybe after 100 or 200 years, nobody would dare to speak something negative about the ancestors or the forefathers. And therefore, the best time in which or the <clears throat> after time in which these negative stories might have been written would be the time immediately after the death. That is, after the death of Saul or after the death of David. At the same time, we are to remember how the people of Israel came to came to be literate. They may not have been able to read and write, most of them, maybe only a few. And therefore, the history of Israel was not written down at that time, but was transmitted orally. We know what God said to Moses and through Moses to the elders of Israel. On the day of Passover, every year, you gather together everybody, the young and the old, and all those who are in their family hold, and explain, let the elder explain to them what all mighty deeds God had done in their favor and helped them to come out of Egypt and to enter the promised land. And therefore, we can see God always had given them the traditions which was to be transmitted orally, we can say. And this culture was there and the tradition was handed over from mouth to mouth for a couple of centuries and it is said that when David conquered the Jebusite city of Jerusalem, usually it is acknowledged that the Jebusites had a better royal culture. We say when we look at the story of Israel, when King Saul or when Saul was anointed the king, we find a narrative about him given. After becoming the king, he was going on farming with his oxen. And we can imagine therefore, even after being the king of Israel, he is just living like a farmer. Therefore, that was the culture of the day. But gradually we see Saul built a palace and the royal culture began to be brought in gradually. But when David became the king and afterwards when he made Jerusalem the capital which had a better or rather higher royal culture, David would have kept it up and the arrangements for better administration may have been received from the Jebusite culture. Therefore, literacy began at the time of David in a way, but still education of the people was not very common. But when Solomon became the king, we see that 
he had a very good relationship with the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, because of the marriage relationship with them. And he imported scribes to Jerusalem and established scribal schools. And it helped to improve the literacy in Israel. Okay, this is what we are to say for the time being. And tomorrow we will continue with the same. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the gift and love of your sacred word. Open our hearts to put into practice that which you have revealed to us through your word. Amen. Thank you.